Hey guys, welcome back to 702 Motoring in Las Vegas. Tonight's video is about digital sound processors, or what's normally called DSPs. And the first thing I want to say before I even begin this video is, one, I hope I can get all the information down on video that I'm trying to get across to customers out there, people that might be watching this video. And number two, most importantly, th this video is not towards anybody, any individual, any other seller, any other person at, at all regarding um, digital sound processors. This video is merely the opinion of 702 Motoring in Las Vegas. It's our opinion. Now, everybody is aware that Everybody's opinions don't necessarily have to agree with one another. Everybody has a right to their own opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. It's a God-given right. With that being said, again, this does not have anything to do with any other seller or person. Now, there's going to be some attention brought to a manufacturer of one of these DSPs here. Can't imagine which one it might be. But we're going to show some detailed information. And the main reason for this is, guys, we get a lot of phone calls a day for customers looking for sound systems. L literally, it might be 50 phone calls a day. And a lot of, the majority of you guys want to buy product. You want a sound system for your Harley. And it takes us so long to, to respond to, to the customers that... that legitimately want to purchase a sound system for the Harley because we're spending hours a day discussing digital sound processors. And, 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 and the simple question, is it needed on a Harley Davidson motorcycle? Yes or no? So we felt this video is very necessary because we can refer... <clears throat> customers to this video and say, you know what, watch this video and it'll help you learn some things and how we view things at 702 Motoring in Las Vegas and provide our opinion. Now, it's just that. It's no more. It's no less. It's not against anybody. It's not because somebody said this or somebody didn't say that. That's not the point, guys. We want to give you our opinion and this is probably the best way we could put it together for you. <clears throat> and we've contemplated this for a while now. And we may do another follow-up video. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. But we did post two videos previously because we wanted to gauge the, the messages we received. And, and there was a lot of hate. And that's okay. That's okay. But guys, understand, again, we're not attacking anybody here. We're only giving you our opinion. And it's very simple. Do you need a digital sound processor on a Harley Davidson motorcycle? Our opinion at 702 Morning Las Vegas is no, you, you don't. And, and that's just our opinion. If someone else says something different, then someone else has a right to their opinion. We're not attacking them, we're not talking about anybody. We're just providing our opinion. And our opinion is based on this. You've seen our Harley Davidson installs we do. We have put the bike right there and we film it. There's no trickery to it. There's no deception. You know, we play a Tom McDonald song because we're allowed to versus YouTube. Well, I say we're allowed to, but I've been trying to post videos since yesterday and YouTube won't let it post. So maybe we're not allowed to use Tom McDonald music anymore. I don't know. We'll see if this video posts tonight. So, in our motorcycles, the majority of bikes that we do, and when I say majority, I say 99%, do not have a DSP in any of the motorcycles, whether it runs one amp or two amps. Now, do we put DSPs on motorcycles? Most definitely. We have no problem doing it. This is all our inventory, other than this unit here. This is a customer unit. Okay? So... Again, guys, 
we're just giving you our opinion in this whole video we're going to do tonight. So, so please understand that. And anybody else who watches this, <clears throat> it's not has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your friend or your other friend or who you know. It's just our opinion, guys. That that's it. So that being said, everybody knows or has at least heard when it comes to a 2014 and up Harley Davidson when you have a factory radio that you must flash the factory radio. And that's our opinion. You must flash that factory radio. And none of these, none of these, in our opinion, is going to compensate for flashing your factory radio. Now, I know that directly contradicts what many, many, many people say out there. Okay? But after I show you guys this information, I can understand why so many, such a large percentage of customers are freaking confused. <laughs> like... They call me and they're like at their wits end of about this digital sound processor issue. And I can hear it in their voice, the frustration. And when I say to them, no, you don't need it. The sound of relief through that phone line is unbelievable because these, you, some of these customers, you're torn about this digital sound processors. You got friends, relatives, family, forums, channels, people, whatever, telling you you got to have it. So let me tell you why you don't have to have it. Okay, I'm going to break it real, break it out real simple. Everybody's heard of Rockford Fosgate. If you go to Rockford Fosgate and you take your cursor and you click on motorcycles. Now, right down, scroll down and Harley Davidson kits. Just kick, click on the kit. <clears throat> now, scroll down. You can click on, it doesn't matter what kit, any kit for a 14 and up bike. Just, just click on it. <clears throat> now, 2014 up Harley Davidson's. This is a Rockford kit, sells for $1,600. It says in red, you will need to flash your factory radio to use this kit. Plain and simple. Okay, so let's click on that and find out why. This is why. This orange graph is going to show you <clears throat> that your factory EQ curve is very radical. And nobody denies this. It, it's all radical. It shoots up and it gets crazy. So when you're tuning any vehicle, it doesn't have to be a motorcycle, any vehicle, normally they're a flat line. The, the tuning stays. So if you tune it at idle, it stays that way through the RPM range. That's not the case on a Harley. It's elevated right from the get-go, right at idle. It's extremely elevated. And when you tune it here and the, you start cruising around and you're all over the place and you shoot up, it, just like Rafa says, it's, you're going to lead to speaker damage. You're going you're gonna to blow your speakers. It, believe me, I, I know lots of customers got garage full of speakers that they've blown over and over and over. And all you need to do is simply flash the, rat, the radio. It flattens the EQ curve. <clears throat> That's it, guys. It's... It, that's it. That's the only reason. It has nothing to do with fade, this, that, this, that. Nothing to do with any of that. It's only removing the factory elevated radical EQ curve. Now, you can also go up on top here, the first line. See it right there? Authorized dealers that can flash your radio. So click on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, everybody on this list is a Rockford Fosgate authorized dealer. Because Rockford Fosgate provides the techno research flashing tool for us when we when we support their product line. So here you got it by state, all the way down. All California, you got tons, tons of people to flash. You got more people that flash in California than any other state in the whole country. And I got more bikes that I that I get from California here that are effed up. They're not flashed. They got equalizers hidden inside the fairings. All kinds of crazy shit. I've never seen this in my life before. So many people flash. Just get your bike flash, guys. Save yourself the headache. Look at all the locations out there. Nationwide. 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 So you guys can go to these to this list right here, and you'll see some Harley Davidson dealerships. But but if you see another location other than Harley in the same city, my recommendation to you is skip the Harley Davidson dealership. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because for some cockamamie reason, Harley Davidson is trained. That you have to, you should flash your radio after your amplifier is installed. Well, that makes zero sense to me because if you spend the time installing, let's say, this amplifier on your bike, you can't tune it, you can't turn it up because you might blow speakers, but you got to put your motorcycle back together, ride it to Harley so they can flash it because they said you have to install that first. So then you get to turn around, go back home, 
go ahead and take it all apart again and then tune your amplifier. That's the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard in my entire life. And all the Harley Davidson dealerships say the same thing. I don't know what it is up there, but think about it. You flash your radio first. Then you go home, put your amp in, you tune it, you put fairing back together, you're good to go. <laughs> Makes sense to me, but apparently to other people it does not. So save yourself the trouble if you skip the Harley dealership unless you have to. And then if they say they're only going to flash it after you install the amp, just tell them, hey, I've already installed the amplifier. Please flash my bike. <laughs> it's just that simple. Now, <clears throat> when you flash your bike, it takes about 10 minutes, guys. They hook it up to a computer or a laptop. It's super simple. You take your clutch side saddlebag off, your cover off. They, they connect right to the input of the motorcycle right there, and you flash it. I recommend play your radio at, let's say, half volume while they flash it. And as soon as your motorcycle flashes, that sound's going to change. You're going to lose 80% of your sound. And it's going to sound so much more dynamic. And you're going to realize all at once how elevated that equalizer curve was. And when you flashed it, you lost all that curve. And now you lost all your volume. Because now you're going to add your volume back when you put your amplifier in. Believe me, that's the right way. Okay, now... <sighs> Let's start. DSR-1 is what everybody has heard of the most. And the reason for that being is it's the one that's been out there the longest. Okay? Now, a lot of people say you have to flash your radio. They say that. Or they say you, you, have, to use a, you have to use a sound processor on your Harley. Because you have to use. You just, you just have to. Just, just because. Okay. Let's say that's true. Who's this made by? Rufford Fosgate. Right? Rafa Fosgate. Now, let's go back to Rafa Fosgate here. Okay, let's go back one more. Now, let's read what this says one more time. You will need to flash your factory radio to use this kit. Now, notice what it does not say. Or, or you can use our DSR-1 digital sound processor instead of flashing your radio. It, it, it doesn't say that anywhere there. So... Understand, this is a multi, 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 multi million dollar corporation here, okay? Now, they're saying you need to flash your radio. They're not saying, or you could buy our other product that we also sell for $349, $369. Let's see what it is. Let's put in here, DSR-1. $349. Now, now don't you think... If that, would, if that would legitimately take care of your flashing issue, don't you think the company that makes it, that tells you you have to flash your radio, would say that to you? Of course, they would try to sell you their other item. But it doesn't say that, does it? It doesn't say, or you could use our DSP. Okay? So that's just one little bit of information we're showing you here. Now, you may realize this is hard to get. Can't get it, can't find it, because it's not available. It's affected by the microchip shortage. And it has been for a long, over a year now. Okay? You might find some. They do ship some of them to some high-end, high-volume high sellers. You know? But this is a universal DSP. It's not made for Harley. It's made for any vehicle you want to hook it up to. It's just the most common because it's been out there the longest. Just like the Sony radio is the most common for 2014 and up Harley because it's the only one that fits the, the dash without modifications, without grinding your, your radio mount. That's why the Sony is so popular. That's why you never hear about the radios. Because any other radio, you've got to modify your radio mount in order for it to fit. So it's Sony, 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 Sony. Well, that was then. So, so now the Soundstream. Since, since we got the Soundstream Reserve radio, guys, nobody buys a Sony anymore. That radio is almost 100% waterproof. You can see the face. It's bright as heck during the day. It plugs right in. You, the kit's built onto the radio. There's no reason to buy a Sony anymore. Don't get me wrong. I've sold... Thousands of 7,000s. I have them in stock. I have about 40 pieces right now. You guys looking for 7,000s? I got them. If you want to use it, I'll sell it. But the Soundstream Reserve is the way to go right now. I'm telling you that right now. So I'm just showing you different DSPs now. There's no particular reason. I'm just showing you size difference for comparisons. That's really about it. This is a great DSP. This is a great DSP. This, I, I got to say, I'm not... <laughs> never had one work. Let's just put it like that. Great design. Okay, but Metro, I mean, excess, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm done spending the time installing your stuff on a Harley Davidson for just to rip it out and done with it. They're expensive. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I can't recommend this piece, guys. Sorry. 
cicada. Okay, so the reason I have a little white piece of paper here is because this is a customer unit. He added RCAs to it. The RCAs, as you can see, do not come with the DSP. So I don't want to show something that isn't legitimate what comes with the item. So I, that's all I did. That's the only reason it's covered. As you look right here, it's just the RCAs. They're elite RCAs, whatever brand that is. And they've been taped up and it's, it's irrelevant. This is the product that comes with the DSP. <clears throat> this is plug and play for the 2014 up Harley. So, so they say, I didn't install it in the customer's bike. Matter of fact, this, this item actually caused a lot of problems <clears throat> with me and this customer. And I don't really have problems out of any customer when it comes to motorcycle installs. So I actually refuse to do the work on his motorcycle. It's 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 not a good deal. I'll be honest with you. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna expose some things with this company because I don't think they're really honest. And and, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not tell people the truth. I'm gonna give people my opinion and I'm gonna show you in black and white what I see. And if you see it, you see it. But I gotta tell you guys, I'm not sold on this brand. Yeah, there's a lot of talk, a lot of hype. The guy's done a lot. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Maybe you should tell all the truth and not just some of the truth. Anyways, moving on. MST Link is an item made by Diamond Audio. It's plug and play for the 14 and up Harleys. It'll run two amplifiers, DSP. It's all, it's all, you know, guys, the whole plug and play terminology. I try not to use it too often because, guys, come on, you got to do a little bit of work, okay? <clears throat> so, let's go back to well let's start this is a dsp 88 now no i know many people know about who owns this company many people know about his background and i'm not saying he's not an intelligent individual however myself personally i, I have an issue with these what could be perceived i'm trying to choose my words really carefully here uh what could be perceived as deception perceived as something that's not truthful uh even call it bait and switch i mean I, I i don't know but if this digital sound processor is shown to have output voltages of up to eight volts okay that's awesome i like that that's a good thing but then it gets delivered and on the box it's got output voltage up to four volts so, so right there, you know, I start losing faith in companies when, when you get, when you get stuff after seeing one thing, you get stuff and it's something different. You know, I look a little further. I looked, I double checked the, the UPC code to see if it changed because it'll usually, if you change an item, usually the UPC code will change. Well, it hasn't changed. So it's the same item as what's being listed here the specs don't match okay so so you know <laughs> i don't know you already new copies already going backwards as as far as i you know as far as i see it you know it's it's really large guys it's larger than this it's larger than this well i mean you could call it even just longer okay um so i don't know this is what it's about never use it don't know if it's good or not which i'm sure it's good I'm sure it's good. It's got cool lights on it. That's going to help. Um, so I have an issue with this. When I get specs seen here, you're buying one thing, you're getting something different. You know, so who who, who, know, who knows what the story is here? So let, let, let's go a little farther, okay? Um, new kids on the block. I see you had to remove a lot of stuff he was saying in here because, you know, You know, you can, you can secret sauce it, your own, you, you can <laughs> soup this stuff up in wording all you want. So, 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 so this company has, has four, four systems right here. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I, I, I don't agree with any of this. I, I don't agree with any of it. I'm going to explain to you why. So you've got horn. Uh, let's just say a mid and horn and you got a mid and horn here. Okay. So you've got a crossover. So you're coming off your mid with a crossover to your horn. Okay. So you've got one channel. You've got one channel running this and you could do that. There, there's nothing wrong. That's not right. It's not wrong. 
and you got one channel running this here too. So now the way we wire up a system in our shop is we will take two channels of the amplifier and we'll run the horns front and rear. And we'll take two channels of the amplifier and run the mids front and rear. So that that's how we do it. You know, other people do it different ways. You know, I like to tune my mids separately from my highs. And first of all, if you're using a DSP, you have to. <laughs> you can't hook a DSP, DSP up to the system because how are you going to tune your mids separately from your highs? You can't. You've got to separate your speaker inputs. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. But yet, I think he's got a DSP amp shown here. Uh, let me see. So here's DSP amp. Okay. It's really small, but this is DSP amp. So, so, so how are you going to use a digital sound processor and tune your mids separately from your horns when you're on the same channel? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. That's not how it works, but this is what's being shown. You know, here's another, here's a CX amp and here's a, uh, DSP amp. So again, he shows DSP and you've got one channel going into the mid and then it goes to the horn. <laughs> that just sounds like, uh, I don't know, someone's trying to sell you something, guys. I, that's not how it works. If you're going to use DSP, you're going to separate each speaker. Your horn's going to work off a different channel than your mid. Okay. So is this a badass system? Okay. So very difficult. This is a badass system. So let, let, let's. I think I clicked on that already. Uh, now I want to show you something different here. This is his badass system. It's a, it's a. No, it's not actually. Well, I don't want to get lost. Let me let me start here because I want to show you things where you guys can see with your own eyes. DSP amp. It's four channels. You've got one channel running each speaker. So so your your if you got horns are not being separated. Uh, coax horns. So you've got one input. So, so how's the DSP going to help you if you can't, if you're not separating horns from your mids? So guys, I don't agree with this. I, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't agree with it. <laughs> I, that's not how, how, how I do a system. It doesn't even make logical sense to me. Um, but let's go a little further. So here you see the Rockford Fosgate Radical EQ setting right here. And it matches the Rockford page. See the redness? Now, you use his DSP and you do not have to flash your factory radio. And I'm telling you right now, I don't believe in that. That's not correct. And if you do not want, and it's in, it's in writing here, guys. If you do not want to flash your computer on your bike, typically an additional $100 or $200. So it's making it sound really expensive, but it's only, I only charge $75 to flash a bike. I don't think Harley charges more than that. Maybe, maybe they charge $100 because Harley's high with everything, but nowhere near $200. If you don't want to flash your computer on your bike, you don't need to. At least not if you have his DSP 150.4 or DSP 125.4 amplifier processor. And there you see it, guys in black and white, okay? And there's no deception here. I'm reading what this website says right now, real time. But then you just jump over here. Warning, not having your bike flashed or using one of our presets can result in you blowing up your brand new speakers. Not that you might have bad sound. You're gonna blow up your speakers, just like Rafer Fosgate says. <laughs> so so we have an agreement there, right? Rafer Fosgate says, right under flashing here, go back one more page. No, oh, Rock Fuzzy, it's really slow sight. You need to flash your factory radio because if you don't, we'll lead to speaker damage. So so he agrees here, okay? Not having your bike flashed or using one of our presets can result in you blowing up your brand new speakers, okay? So let's take a little bit further. Now, understand something, guys. He says you can use his DSP and not flash the factory radio. Well, I suppose if you're going to go ahead and take the output and reduce it so much, 
I guess, you know, I guess realistically you could do that. But why would you go well, – if you're trying to be up here, flatten the EQ curve when you flash it, why are you trying to start all the way down here? Because you're trying to compensate for the equalization curve. So really, how good is that DSP really doing for you? That extra money that DSP is going to cost. It's $320-something dollars plus the cables, plus the installation, plus tuning it. You're going to spend four, five, six hundred dollars $600 extra, which is normal. Instead of just flashing your radio for $75 to $100, even $200. You're just compensating by putting a Band-Aid on something. And, and let's detune it so much so we can, <laughs> we can just maybe be okay. But when you can start here... Why all this this craziness? Just flash it and be here and just tune your amplifier. I mean, it's not very difficult. I mean, that's it. You got gains, you got frequency, high pass, low pass. Guys, all our bikes we do right here. <laughs> they don't have DSPs and they rock. They rock. <laughs> this is crazy. But I'm gonna show you more, okay? Because I wanna I wanna go back. I wanna show you more here, guys. I, you know, um, which is his most expensive system? So his amplifiers, you got 125 watts. It, so I pulled up his DSP here. So this is his amplifier. So so first of all, understand something, guys. Most of his systems had two amplifiers, okay? We run one amp, one amplifier, okay? But he's running two, so you're going to spend a whole lot more extra, extra money running his product. So let's see what's going on here. 8.875 inches long. So it's nine inches. And he wants you to run two of those? Well, that's 8.875 wow okay but you're gonna install two of these amps this size in, in your fairing well you could do it in a road glide it is gonna take you a lot of work and you're gonna it's gonna take experience to do it i don't know about any do it yourself or is it gonna do it you're gonna you're not gonna be happy with the results you know i could do it because i do it all the time i know exactly how to do it but you guys just want to install your own system with two almost nine inch long amplifiers shit your stuff's gonna be floating around that fairing you're never gonna get it all tight it's going to be just like this bike over here, this orange one over here. That amp's just sitting there laying around. I mean, I'll, I'll show you. I'm not going to hide anything. This is from, right from California. Right right here. Here's one, 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 one amplifier. It's just loose up in there. The other amp right here, another one almost nine inches long, was laying on top of his headlight. That you can do. Okay, but this, you can let a customer leave like this. It's a second bike. Second bike within a couple weeks I've got out of California. Just done and brought right here. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what's underneath there. I don't know. So let's take it further. This amp is super, super, super duper large. Okay, let's look at its power. 70 watts times four. 75 watts, 70 watts times four. And well, let's not look at 14.4 volts, guys, because it's doubtful your bike's gonna be doing that when you're pulling pull current, but you could. Okay, well, let's give the benefit of the doubt. 92 watts a channel at four ohms and a Let's give them max power at 2 ohms, meaning you're running two speakers per channel. It gives you 2 ohms, 152 watts times 4. Okay? So, we've got 92 and 152. Sound digital. 4 ohms, 132 watts a channel at 4 ohms. 200 watts a channel at 2 ohms. That's 800 watts of real power. 12.6 volts, same thing. Now, if you want to jump up to his 14.4 uh, volts, let's do that. 92 watts a channel, 152 watts a channel. Oh, that's what, yeah, that was that was what we already did. I guess it was 115 and 70. Okay, so 92 and 152, 147. And 223, guys, and an amplifier that's almost half the size. So, Cicada, I don't know. I, I think you came on the market talking to talk, but I don't think you can walk the walk at, at, at all, to be honest with you, with all your... But we're going to go further because you got you got a lot of contradictions, contradictions going on here. Uh, I'm looking for your top-of-the-line system here. I thought I had it, but... Uh, Maybe this is it. This is it here. Yeah, twenty nine hundred dollars. All right. So twenty nine hundred dollars, guys, <clears throat> gets you a six and a half and a horn, and 
a six by nine and a horn. No cutting kit, no lid, you figure it out type thing. Two amplifiers, 8.875 inches and 8 point, I can't read that. Let's just say eight inches. Yeah, good luck putting those in your bike. Good luck. $2,900, super sale, super sale. Okay, I'm gonna call you out, Cicada, right now. A friendly call out. Friendly call out. You got the shit? Your bike's, your, your product's number one? Okay. Here's my front system. 1270. Sound digital 800.4. 6.5 mids. The grills we build in-house. MO75 T shell horn custom building the grills. Road glide, street glide, same price. Let's take 1270. Let me give you some diamond audio. 6x9 coax horns with a 6x9 cutting kit. Okay, so now you can actually put them in your bike. $838. $2,100. And you, he was $29. <laughs> I'm $820 less. <clears throat> and and uh, Cicada, I bet my system sounds better than yours. I bet my system is louder than yours. I bet my system is cleaner than yours. And... I demoed a bike the other night, had 124, 128 decibels. Would you please show us your product installed in your motorcycle with two amps? I only have one. We'll use your two. I'm going to give you a little push, a little help. And would you please put a meter on it and show us, show us what kind of decibels you pull? You can put it right up the speaker. It's okay, just like I do. I, I'm just curious. Maybe play the same song, a Tom McDonald song. We Bluetooth it right off of uh, YouTube. Nothing special. No crazy, super duper competition type music. Just average Tom McDonald music. You pick the song. Makes no difference to me. I'm curious. Does your system outperform mine for my $800 less system with your dual am amplifiers with no way to install this stuff in the bike? Not the rear, at least. The front, yes. Yeah, so, But I'm just curious. Where are you putting one-inch horns in a, in a 2014 motorcycle? I mean, I can understand if you got a 90 to 13, where you can take a couple of gauges out. Like, you don't need an air gauge. You don't need a volt gauge. But 14 and up, you can't take any gauges out. So where are you getting out those horns? Like, pointing out of the out of the, the fairing? You know, I you know, I think you talk to talk, but I don't think you can walk to walk. I think your product design is, is poor. I think customers are going to have a hell of a time trying to install this stuff. And I think you're kind of deceiving people on whether they need a DSP or not because you're all over the place with it. And your amps don't put out that much power. So I appreciate the effort, you know, but I got a lot of deception going on here with this brand. And not to mention, not, not to throw, <clears throat> you know, logs in the fire, but I had a customer come in. It was day before yesterday. He did buy two pairs of Cicada, um, call the horn speakers. Uh, they compete against the Diamond Audio. You know, they're same price, maybe a little bit more money. They say they take more power. Okay, I don't really have a problem with Diamond Audio MP694 is blowing. Um, but this customer came in because his bike was sounding like crap. He had a Sound Digital 1200.4 on the four 6x9s that allegedly take 500 watts RMS each. The amp puts out 300 watts RMS a channel, and all four speakers were blown. The, 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 um, the woofer was actually separated from the voice coil. And I did sell him some Diamond Audio speakers, and I and I tried to get to get his old speakers. I wanted to use them for a video I knew I was going to be doing, but he was not going to let me have those speakers for anything. I even said, let me borrow them just for a day or two because I wanted to put them in this video, but that didn't happen. He wanted to get them back to wherever he bought them from, however he bought them from. So let me go on a little bit further and just show you one more thing here. Well, before I show you that, let me show you this. <clears throat> okay, so we've all seen these DSPs right here. I know you guys want to know what's underneath this right here, right? Um, and so one of, someone did comment on our last video. Well, hey, you know, if DSPs, you don't need them, why are amplifier manufacturers starting to put them in the, DS, in the, in the, in the amplifiers now? I go, guys, because amplifier manufacturers are realizing people are selling their DSPs separately, and they're like, hey, ding, 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 let's think about this. Maybe we should put DSPs inside the amplifier so we can get that customer sale and that customer sale and that customer sale and that customer sale. Okay, so what makes you think other manufacturers aren't doing that? Now, I can't show you real current future product, but I can just say to you, here's Diamond 4 channel, HXM, here's Diamond, or here's a 4 channel, here's a 2 channel. I just put that. You guys can figure it out. You guys can figure it out. Here's an 8 channel. 
You guys can figure it out, right? So when you say other manufacturers, uh, Diamond Alley is another manufacturer too, okay? So with that being said, here's a Cicada DSP. Comes in at the biggest one in the house. Brand new design. Why would you create a DSP that's even bigger than everybody else's? This has been on the market forever, and you're bigger than that one. Guys, you have room, but you don't have that kind of much room. Don't understand, these harnesses are coming out the sides of this thing on both sides. You know, and you're not going to, you're not going to be bending these things down where you, you know, that's an extra inch or so of clearance. You put a couple amps on a bike, guys. <laughs> Believe me when I say that, you're not going to have as much room as you think you have. And you could be shoving that thing somewhere and you could be crushing, crushing the cores. And that's where problems occur. You want stuff that fits, that fits simple, small, nice. Ah, oh, it's too small. Was it too small? How small is too small? Look at that. You guys recognize that? Mm-hmm. Diamond audio. Wow, well, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Well, we're not worried about that one. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> You're brand new in the market, Cicada? Please! Listen, guys. So we may come out with some stuff and we talk to talk, but I tell you what, don't think Diamond Audio is not working on stuff. Don't think, we've been testing this app for months now, not this app, this DSP for months now. This is a six channel. These are eight channels. Okay, so I'm not going to, no deception here, no deceiving. This is a six channel for motorsport applications. We can use it in any applications, technically. It's for motorsports, UTVs. It's fully waterproof, fully waterproof. Okay, nothing here. Well, Metro says this is waterproof, but guys, <laughs> I don't see how that's waterproof. Not that it makes a difference. You know, the chances of getting damaged by water is probably unlikely anyways. But look at this thing. <laughs> that, that, that's your comeback, Cicada? Because we know, we know who you're going after. We know who you're going after. Well, don't think. Don't, don't think because you... Put something in the market before somebody else did that somebody else is not doing something here. There's more stuff. Oh, there's so much more stuff, Cicada. So much more stuff. You know why? A lot more money behind Diamond Audio than this company here. A lot. So let me explain to you about this. It is Bluetooth. It also has a USB that is waterproof. There's a plug that goes on here. It's not here right now. Because a lot of people like to take their laptop and go to the application and tune it. Okay, without Bluetooth, without the phone. Sometimes trying to, you know, a DSP off your phone is not as user-friendly as, you know, people make it out to be. Right, Cicada? How's that going with um, Android Auto? We had a little, little trouble right there, huh? Yeah, nobody else does. Everybody else can do Apple or Android, but apparently you're having some trouble. Matter of fact, you tell people on your website... If your Android's not working correctly, just go ahead and beg, borrow, and steal somebody's iPhone if you have to, you know? <laughs> well, you could joke around your item not working, but I, I'm hoping customers can see through the deception here. Guys, hopefully you can see through the deception. Guys spending, you want to buy all this new stuff because this guy did this, did that, did this, used to? That's in the past, guys. That's not now. That's not current. This may be an effort at something, but nothing, nothing. Not, not when you got you buy one thing and something else shows up and you're showing all kinds of craziness. But I'm not done. I'm going to show you more. I'm not done. Let me talk about this. So we've been working on this for, for multiple months now. And actually two more also. I, and I can't, as much as I want to, I can't. I cannot show them. Um, but six channel, waterproof. You have USB for uh, laptop. It has Bluetooth. Uh, it's a really nice piece, guys. I mean, it, 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 is, a, it is a nice piece. It, it really is a nice piece. And <laughs> how, how easy is that to get in a motorcycle? Huh? How easy is that? Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Give us something to work for, buddy. Okay. Let's look at this right here. This is from... Roguelide.org. And this is this is not me. I don't know who this is. I just ha I just it happened to came come across because I was searching for information on DSP88, the, the cicada. Um, this is what it says. Customer says, 
I am thinking about going with the DSP and have been trying to figure out which one to buy. I obviously would like it to be small. <laughs> okay, well, it'd be Diamond Audio, cool, clearly. Uh, Bluetooth compatible and easy to use. First of all, guys, DSPs are not easy to use. If you don't have experience, <laughs> I'm not an audio expert. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a DSP in a guy's hand that's not an audio expert. Digital sound processor is designed for competition use to get the best of the best, the best sound out of every speaker you possibly can. Okay, and here's an example right here, guys. I'm not an audio expert, but can figure things out. Okay, okay. The Cicada DSP looks really easy to hook up, okay? Does anybody have real-world experience with it? In case it matters, my setup is very simple. A Stinger 4-channel, 7.4, and these MMAT speakers, I don't know which ones they are, and 6 by 9s on the bag lids. I, I don't carry MMAT, so let's just assume they're good speakers. And a 4-channel lamp. So he gets a reply um, on the back. And this other guy goes, and I don't know who this is. Who is this? The CP Bidor. I don't know who that is. I don't know who anybody this is. What are you trying to accomplish with a DSP? I contend that with the speakers you're currently running, a DSP is entirely unnecessary. You have speakers built to play from these hertz, these specs, so there's no need to bandpass anything. If your intention is to use a DSP to have some form of graphic equalizer, I'm going to tell you that you're not going to get $300 worth of better, of better sound. It's more than $300. There's wiring, there's tuning, there's a lot more involved. Specifically, if you aren't going to use an RTA and pink noise to tune, you're adding a level of complication to a setup that just won't benefit from it. If you have money to burn, then by all means do it. But one amp, four speakers, coax setup isn't one that will benefit from the added expense and, and learning curve. And that's just, you know, one person. Now, I want to talk about, here is some Cicada information. Okay. So this is off the Cicada website, okay? There's no, de there's no deception here, what I'm about to show you. <clears throat> Their DSP-88, it features an incredible small size form factor. Well, it's so incredible, it's actually the largest one out of all the selection right here. And this is, a, this is the most common one, guys. Everybody knows about the HKI Mini Sound Digital. Everybody knows about DSR-1, there's no doubt. I don't know, may, some people may know about this, they may not, it doesn't matter. I don't even put this in the equation. I wanna just throw it in the trash, truthfully. And then you have the cicada. So how is it the smallest when you're the largest? So you're not truthful. Okay, so I can understand making your product sound good. Listen, guys, I, I, I do. But you got to be honest about it. <laughs> okay, so anyways, <clears throat> plus, we have added preset audio curves for the most popular bike gears and typical gear used. Okay, so you're going to send your DSP out with just some generic tuning because that's what you think they should have. But what's the use of using a DSP if you're not really tuning it? Um... These audio presets fix the weird EQ setting that Harley Davidson's put into many of the bikes. Well, they put in all the bikes, uh, other than Boom Audio 2. If you have a Boom Audio 2 radio, guys, you do not have to flash your bike, okay? It already comes with pretty much a level EQ curve. So you're good there on Boom Audio 2, not Boom Audio 1, just 2. Okay, so it fixes that. Well, it didn't fix it. You detuned it so much so you could use it. Um, normally you'd have to pay HD motorcycle child 100 to 200 to flash your bike. Not, not with Cicada DSP 88 processor. These presets solve in capital letters that issue and gives you curves that may be, to may be, listen to that guys, may be totally fine with you and your listening habits. One click and done. And then it says, even if it doesn't happen, well, I'm not going to go into that. But then, uh, we got some more fun, fun stuff. Great form factor. Small size package, a winner. Easily fits into the fairing of any Harley bagger. Okay, well, you get a couple amps in, of your Cicada amps, and that, and we'll see how easy that fits. Okay, so that was the one thing. This is also from the Cicada website. It's a screenshot. Digital sound processor, equalizer. Do you need a DSP in your system? The simple answer is yes. So, yes, you need a DSP. Also, if your system uses horn-loaded tweeters... You need a DSP. Okay, well, well, hang on a second, because your horn loader tweeter's here. How's a DSP going to help you if you're not running your horn separately from your mids? So you're just saying anything you say you can to sell product. You're bullshitting people. That's what This is what this is, guys. This is bullshit. It, everything I've seen with this product is bullshit. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to candy coat it. I mean, I've been all night, but honestly, let's go. We'll follow along here. 
Um, <laughs> oh, Larry, Larry, Larry. Um, also, if your system uses horn load tweeters, you'll need DSP. Pro audio type speakers that use horn tweeters are designed to be used along with quite a bit of equalization, but yet not in your systems, they don't, in order to attain very high volumes. Um, which isn't necessarily true. You hear our systems, guys, and I don't know, maybe I just have better speakers, I don't need a DSP. I don't know. Um, on the other hand, if your system is basic and you're willing to limit it to just the bass and treble controls of your radio, then you might not need a DSP. Okay, well, you said here you do, because the simple answer is yes. Yes! Then might not, so now it's no. Okay, all in the same paragraph, notice. <laughs> That's a quick, quick contradiction. What radios... What radio flash do you need? It is possible to install a system without performing a radio flash, but only when using a sound processor. <laughs> okay, so we're back to, you don't need a flash, you just need a DSP, just like up here. Okay, it's only the second next paragraph down. So, <laughs> so we also recommend you to do a radio flash. Okay, so shit, I'm back to getting a flash again. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want is always a Rafa Fosgate flash, no matter what. I mean, guys, this is this is this is literally insane. In two paragraphs, need it, don't need it, need it, D no, need it, don't need it, don't need it, need it. <laughs> He's conscious. I can understand, guys, why you guys are so about out of your minds when you call us over here. When I I tell you, I hear it in your voices the sound of relief when I simply say. You don't need it. And it's so hard for some people just to simply ask. They just, they just, I just want to ask you one question. Sure. I go, you don't need a DSP. He goes, how do you know I was going to say that? I go, because I could tell by the tone of your voice. Guys, I get 50 phone calls a day. Let's go on. <laughs> this seems to be the same paragraphs in a different part of the website. And it doesn't have the same wording. And it's all done the same day, which is, which is crazy. Uh, normally, you would have to have paid Harold Davidson shop 100 200 to flash your bike, not with Cicada Audio DSP 88. Okay, I think that's all it's said on here. So now, now, now <laughs> this is the last piece of information because I, I, I hope I've got the point across here. This is actually from the owner of Cicada. He, I'm sure some of you know his name. If not, there it is. Um, one paragraph. This is to the customer of this item. That cause it's it causes a lot of issues, guys. And it, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated from the phone calls I get, and I'm frustrated from the deception. This guy, this guy, came in with a bike that was done in California that was just fucked up, right from right from there to here. It I it was horrible. I I mean literally a brand. It was horrible. This is a twenty one Harley. They cut everything. They cut all. <laughs> I think I've, I've shown this in another video, guys. This is a 21 Road Glide, okay? Under, well, not anymore. It's under warranty. They cut, look, look at this. This is a, your factory main harness. They tapped in here. Now, you'll notice, I mean, I don't think red and black are designed to be soldered together. Uh, but may, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I, I, I don't know. And, and I'm afraid to look in these two that are really been heavy duty. Like, hey, you ain't looking in here. We don't need anything. <laughs> I mean, guys, what the fuck? A 21 motorcycle. They cut everything. Look at that. They cut the plugs to the radio. They just wrapped the shit around. There's two amps in here. At least they used two power wires. I was, I was surprised. Both crossers are blown. Horns are blown. This is. Look at this high-low. Look at this. What is this shit? It's all tapped into the harness. Look at this. This came out of California. It's all tapped into this factory harness. They. This guy has no warranty. They ruined this guy's warranty. A brand new 21 Harley. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so this is from the owner to this customer. Uh, if using a stock Harley Davidson, then my DSP has a harness set up for the speaker Molex. I'm also, I highly recommend you do the Rockford Flash. Run, don't walk to get that done. Okay, so not just slowly go there. Run and get it done right now. But yet you're saying you don't need it because your DSP takes care of it. So what is it, Larry? What is it? Is, it? is it, you say one thing, then you say another. You say one thing, you say another. No wonder customers don't know what the fuck's going on. And they're calling you because they're all freaking out. I, I apologize for the foul language, guys. But I just want you to feel a little bit of this frustration over here. You know, you guys get bent over every time you take your Harley into the dealership for service. 
I, I, I don't want to be the one that, that continues that process. Okay, you spend 300, 350, whatever it is, you spend 150 for a harness. You're at $500 right now, and you still got to tune the thing. Are you going to try it yourself? If you've never done it, man, you're going to have a hard time. Or you're going to have someone just, hey, I can, hey, let me just tune that thing for you. I got that special tune for you. I'm just going to send it to you. I won't, I won't do business that way, guys. It, listen, if you want me to sell you a DSP, you want me to pre-tune, that super duper pre-tune, I'll do it. If that's what you really want, if you want to spend the three fifty, the five hundred dollars plus whatever, whatever six hundred bucks, save the six hundred dollars, guys. I'm telling you, save the six hundred dollars, and just don't do coax horn speakers. Uh, do do the speaker setup here. Whether it be a, I make this for every year bike. It doesn't matter if it's a thirteen or thirteen and below rogue glide street glide. I've got them for every bike. I custom build them in every every grill, guys. I do this here. You know, it takes some time, day or two or so, but we do it here. You know, believe me, this horn and that mid is louder than the MP654 co coax horn. And a lot of people get confused about this. And guys, this is a great speaker, okay? But the shallow horn outperforms that horn. And the mid is even. I'll rate the mids even, to be honest with you. I'm not trying to put one above the other, but the shallow horn built in the custom grill is louder than this. This takes a lot more work to install in your bike. You've got to grind away the whole, you know, entry level of the speaker pod to get it in. Sometimes only three holes work instead of four. Guys, buy better speakers. You don't need a DSP. You've seen our YouTube channel, Bikes. You know, I'm calling you out, Cicada. Put a meter on your bike with your two, two amps. Just throw your DSP into it at the same time. I don't care. You know, it doesn't, you know, yeah, you can, I can add a DSP to my bikes. I can make it sound better. But if the customers are happy spending $800 less, I, I you know, I want the customer to be happy. You know, I don't want him to feel like, you know, he's been taken advantage of or spent more than he wanted to. You know, people don't have money. Yeah, you know, a lot of people do have money like they used to. Well, like they, a lot of people have money, but a lot of people don't have that much money, and they already weren't trying to spend the $2,100 my system came to, letting up $3,000 on a Cicada system that won't sound as good, have take three times as much to install it. But, guys, that's my video for tonight. Um, appreciate you hanging in there. It's almost an hour long. <laughs> I couldn't explain it any quicker. I try to do it as quick as I can, but I, I just want you guys to understand. But again, again, please understand, this is our opinion. You, you may not agree with anything we just showed you. You may be just the opposite. And, and I could take constructive criticism. And, and, and if other shops are watching this video, I, you know, I, I'm curious what kind of decibels your guys' bikes reach out there, guys. And I'm not, I'm not saying we build the best. I'm not saying we have the best. I'm not saying we are the best. I'm just curious because I like to see what other shops are doing out there. And, and I have watched other people's videos and I have learned from them. I'm not going to sit here and tell you anybody that I haven't. Yes, I have. You know, and hopefully people have from me too. Uh, you know, we're all here to better the community. But I just wanted to clear the air on this stuff here, guys. So if you call me about a DSP question, I'm going to refer you to this video and hopefully it post tonight. And then hopefully we'll give you the information, you're, you know, and the answers you're looking for. You know, I, I view it as a big headache, to be honest with you. Now, now if you want to spend seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000, yes. You want to do some Neo speakers, some, some badass uh, horn mounts that I build, yes, we'll do it. By all means, a DSP is going to be great in that application. But it, it's, you don't have to use it. And it, you don't have to do it whether you have one amp or two amps. If you want to, yes, you can do it. Yes, it will sound better as long as you wire it up correctly. But you, you can't do it the way Cicada says to wire it up because it doesn't make sense. And if anybody thinks I'm wrong, you tell me you think I'm wrong, <laughs> you know? But I tell you what, Larry, you got some you got some explaining to do, brother, because you're this intelligent person. You create all this stuff, and, you know, you say you've created the whole Diamond Audio line, which you haven't. So keep it real, Larry. Don't say things that aren't 100% necessarily true. But this is a poor start to come into the marketplace with your brand and talk to talk, but I don't think you can walk the walk. Because I've seen a lot of inconsistencies all over your website. And nobody's perfect, I understand. But seriously, <laughs> seriously, cause me problems over here. All this, this craziness, you know. And the customers are, they're, they're bouncing around like a ping pong ball. They don't know what the heck's going on. Because you got, 
you're confusing them. I'm just trying to keep them in a straight line, and you're bouncing them all over the basketball court. So, you know, sometimes I can't win with that, you know, and I, and I didn't win with this customer. He's going to pick his bike up, but I didn't do the job. I, I didn't do the job. <laughs> so, well, I should like, say it like this. I didn't finish the job. So, bad situation. Not happy with this company. I'm not happy with the product. I'm not happy with what they show. None of it makes any sense to me, but maybe it's just me. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. 702 Murdering Las Vegas.